Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked up this week. So I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have the London Pen Company and this is the Christopher 15 in Primary Manipulation 1. We have an Edison Collier in Antique Marble. We have a Parker Duofold Prestige Blue Chevron. We have a Parker Duofold Prestige Black Chevron. We have a Classic Pens LM1 in the KN or Flame Red. We have a new addition to my collection, a Classic Pens LB5 in the KN in the Flame Red. We have a Tatcha Miyabi Winter's Breath. We have an Atelier Lusso Carina in the Black Ice Illuminite. We have an Atelier Lusso Carina in the Diamond Nebula. And we have a Leonardo Officina Italiana Memento Zero Grande in the Sand. So I think let's take a look at these pens in a little bit more detail here. So this is the really beautiful uh, London pen company Christopher 15 and I have to say I am really loving this size from Sean uh, for me I, as you know, probably know if you've been watching my videos for a while I do like girthy pens I do like larger pens I'm not one for maybe the thinner pen or the vintage pens but this pen really does speak to me so this has a Jonathan Brooks primary manipulation one material and i know some of you will say yeah the, this material is now available in every single manufacturer available on this earth and it, it is uh but it's also a really lovely sort of oil painting like uh, effect that's going on here and this is a beautiful material so uh sean sent this in for review and this has a number six size. Uh, it's a Bok nib, not a Yovo nib. Uh, but I do like Bok nibs. And so I am actually pleased to see a Bok nib on here. Uh, I did get a broad nib. And uh, I do like how this writes as well. Uh, it's a cartridge converter pen. But it just, for me, it feels right in my hand. I, I, I like the thicker section. It does have a concave section there. Uh, and that helps my fingers rest quite nicely. But you can just see here, this pen really is is quite stunning in terms of the material. Um, and I, I like it. I like it a lot. And I like the work that Sean has been doing here. So Sean, if you don't know, uh, is from the London Pen Company. He's in uh, uh, Ontario, Canada. And uh, I just like this. So, so this is the second pen that I have from Sean and... Uh, I just like that a lot. So I have that one inked up with me this week as well. And the next pen I have inked up this week is this one. And this is a pen that typically I haven't written with a lot in, I want to say the last couple of years. I have written with it, but just not a lot. Uh, I This is an Edison uh, Pen Company Collier in the Antique Marble. And I, I love the material. And I bought it for a number of reasons. One, I love the material. And two, I love the size, even though you cannot post these caps. But this is a, a beautiful pen. Uh, I bought this in the time when I was liking 1.3 and 1.5 millimeter stubs. So I had bought this with a stub nib and I just really hadn't written with it much. And uh, I decided more recently to swap this out and I had a broad uh, nib so I put in a broad Edison nib there as well uh, I had actually bought a broad nib uh, a while back and uh, I remembered that I had it so I thought you know what actually uh, a friend of mine Ali uh, was was talking that she had uh, sold one of her Edisons recently and uh, I just thought you know what I need to get this pen out if I could put a broad nib in it maybe I'd write with it more and yes I have been writing with it a lot so I have this pen inked up uh, with me this week as well but this is a stunning stunning material as you can see there so it's so almost like a tiger's eye or a cat's eye it's a beautiful material 
So that one's inked up uh, this week as well. Uh, another pen that I've not inked up much lately, and uh, this is the Parker Duofold Prestige, and this is in the blue chevron. And I really do like this. It's a little bit more on the shorter side of pens that I, I typically like, as you can see here. Uh, and this is the black chevron, which we'll come to in a, in a little moment. But this is a blue chevron I bought this a number of years ago, and uh, I really liked it. I got it for a very good price. Comes with a number six size, uh, 18 karat gold, uh, Parker nib there. Uh, it's a cartridge converter pen, and uh, I like I, I like the weight of it, and I like the look of it, and I like that nib and feed. Um, it is a little bit more on the thinner side when it comes to the section for what I prefer but uh, I I find that the weight uh, really makes up the difference and I can hold it a little bit higher up if I want to so I have this one I decided I would ink this one back up because I've not written with that one for a while uh, that has a uh, medium nib on that one and then as I mentioned I've got the again a Parker Duofold Centennial uh, and this is with uh, the black Actually, it's not a Centennial. It's a Prestige uh, in the black chevron. I always want to call these Centennials because they are Centennial size. Uh, but it technically is the Prestige in the black chevron. And I saw this going for a really good price. And I decided I would buy it. It was used, uh, but I, I liked it. So I decided, yeah, I would go and get it. So... Uh, I was really happy that I did because, uh, again, this has a number six size Parker Duofold nib there, uh, cartridge converter, and again, it just it feels nice and weighty in my hand, so I am liking that a lot. So I have that one inked up, and uh, shock horror, I'm not actually putting a black ink in there, so <laughs> you'll you'll see the ink that I have inked up in there. It's probably not that far off of black but it's not a black ink and and i'll tell you now it's not a gray ink either the next pen i have inked up this week is my lovely classic pens lm1 in the flame red and i love this diffusion bonded acrylic here this this material is really really beautiful and uh, i was so glad i was able to pick this up when i did a few years ago uh, from Sarge, uh, the One Man Pen Show at the London Pen Show, and uh, that's London, UK, uh, not Ontario. Um, but this has a Classic Pens LM1 nib. Uh, it's a number six size nib. It's a cartridge converter pen, and I was the the story behind this is I. It was my first London Pen Show. It was my first pen show actually, and. I went to the pen show with a very high budget in mind, uh, or what I thought was a high budget. And I decided that I wanted a Classic Pens LB5 in the KN, the Flame Red. And uh, I'd, I'd accept other LB5s as well, but the LB5 in the Flame Red. So I rolled up to Sarge's table. I got an early pass, and uh, he had one there. But unfortunately, it had just been reserved uh, from somebody online. So uh, he did say, well, look, I've got the LM1 here, if you want that. Or I've got some LB5s. And I've got some LB5s in uh, the brown, the Kawasaki, which I did pick up, and uh, a white as well. Uh, so in the end, I picked this one up, and I picked up the brown in the Kawasaki. And uh, I didn't think much of it. But I've always been wanting this in an LB5. And if you wait long enough, <laughs> something will come along. And uh, a friend of mine, William, was selling some pens out of his collection. And he had uh, three LV5s that he'd collected over the last few years. He had a purple one, which he went to sell uh, about a year ago to me. And I said, I just I can't do that price. And it wasn't that it was overpriced, but it was just a high price and these sell for high prices now and then a year later this year in 2021 he decided that 
he was going to sell a green LB5, which he sold uh, to somebody else. But he said to me, look, I remember you saying that that this was your grail of grails. Um, you've got first refusal on it. And again, although the price was very high, I decided, you know what? I, I've actually had several opportunities of picking this LB5 up in the red. Uh, I had one was at the London Pen Show. There was a second one. There was somebody selling in uh, uh, El Paso, Texas. And uh, this was a third attempt. So I thought, you know what? Third time lucky. This is going to be added to my collection. So I am really glad that I was able to add this to my collection because it really is a beautiful, beautiful uh, material. Uh, this is 38 of 50. Uh, it's The reason why I wanted this uh, in the LB5 is that this is made by Sailor. Uh, and so it is basically a, a king of pen. And it has a King of Pen nib on there, Sailor 1911, 21 cat gold nib. It's a cartridge converter as well. And I just like everything about the Sailor King of Pens. And and I like that this is not only a Sailor King of Pen, but it has the diffusion bonded acrylic. And you can see the name net KN. So uh, I have that one inked up this week as well. And... Uh, it's a bittersweet moment because it's another one of those times where you can actually say, you know what, I, I can finally tick that off of my wish list. And uh, so it, in a sense, it's nice, but then it's, well, what's next? And that's the problem. The next pen uh, was another pen that was on my growl list, not quite this pen. Um, the previous pen that I l sort of lost out to was a uh, Tatcha and it was a Winter's Breath, which was more of a sort of rectangular shaped pen like the Duo Folds or the classic pen, uh, not the classic, the uh, Telia Lusso pens. Uh, so I missed out to that and then a couple of years later, this one came along uh, and uh, this is the Tatcha Miabi's Winter Breath. And I decided, you know what, I have to get this one. And uh, I did. And I'm so glad that I did because this is, again, a stunning pen. It's a Mackie pen. Uh, you can see here it's got Raden strips or stripes. It has crushed quail's eggs all the way around the pen. Uh, it's a beautiful pen. And I'm glad that I managed to pick this one up. I kind of still wish I was able to pick up the original Winter's Breath, but I prefer this one more. So I'm actually glad that kind of that I didn't pick it up and I waited. Uh, you can see here it's got the crushed quail's eggs here on the section. It's got the artist signature. It's got a number six size uh, nib there. It's a nib made by Sailor. Uh, it's a cartridge converter pen as well. Um, the only thing I will say, and I have not experienced it myself, and my uh, I have a friend, Jackie, who has the original Winter's Breath. She's not experienced it. But I have seen some people where they've inked up and they dip the, the, the nib, uh, the section, and they've inked up. And some of these quail's eggs have actually discolored. So I do actually syringe fill the cartridge converter on this one just in case. Uh, I just want to make sure that I'm not actually going to discolor any of these. So um, from that perspective, uh, I, I haven't seen any discoloration. And I want to try and keep it that way. Um, now, this pattern always matches up 100% every single time. And I like it. I like that pen. So I have that one inked up with me this week as well. The next pen is an Atelier Lusso. It's a Carina and it's the Black Ice Illumilite. And you can see here, this again is a stunning material. It's, it's a marbling effect that's going on. And it's the reason why it was called Black Ice was because it does kind of look like a, a, an ice with some black ice there. Um, it's stunning material. It's made of Illumilite, which is a blend of uh, a cross between resin and uh, other material. So this has some metal flakes in here. And you'll probably be able to see there's one about here. Uh, you'll see one there on the edge of the piston knob or what would be the piston knob there 
and another one just there as well. Uh, so this is an interesting sort of pen, and you'll see a few more here as well. So this this is a is a lovely pen. I I love this material a lot. Uh, it's a cartridge converter pen. It has a number six size uh, Yovo nib in there, uh, and I like it. I like it a lot. So. Um, the only thing you do have to be wary of is that you can get some staining or pooling around between the nib and the feed and the or the nib collar and the, the section. Uh, so on white pens, you can get some slight discoloration on sections. But I love this pen and uh, it's got a broad Yovo nib in there and I just, I love it to bits. So uh, that was a pen that I had commissioned from Eric at Telia Luso. The next pen is again another pen from Eric at Atelier Luso. And now this wasn't one that I had commissioned. Uh, it was a pen that I quickly, uh, I was having, uh, I think, five or six pens commissioned, including this uh, Black Ice Alumilite. And I saw this on Eric's website and I said, Eric, I really would like this. He said, oh, I'm sorry, but uh, that I made for the show and I really don't have many show pens. But he said, look, I can make you another one of these when I get back from this show in, in uh, I think it was California or San Francisco, probably San Francisco. And I said, okay, that's fine. Um, we can add it later on. And then he came back from the show and he said that he was working on my pens again. And I said to him, I said, have you still got this pen available? Because it's on your website. He said, yeah. It, strangest thing is it didn't sell and I said well it has now because I'm buying it uh, so uh, I was so glad that he took it to the show and for some reason nobody bought this pen uh, this pen is made of a uh, Mackenzie works uh, diamond cast material so it has diamond dust ground into that resin and it just really sort of sparkles but in a good way in a subtle way so I, I love this pen and i love this texture clip that eric did here this hammered clip uh it has a number six size uh yovo nib on there and uh that's a broad nib uh i also have a broad nib on this one as well uh i typically do like uh broad nibs so uh for me that that is nice uh and i have that one inked up with me this week as well and then the final pen that I have inked up is this one, and it's a Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande in the Sand. And yes, that is a bit of a mouthful, but uh, so is this pen. <laughs> this pen is a beautiful pen. Uh, it's it's got this striated sort of um, sort of stripes going on there, where they've layered the material, cut it at almost like a ninety degree angle. Uh, to, to the way that the material is and you get these slices coming through here So this really is a beautiful pen. I love it a lot. Uh, this is number 154 uh, It's a grande uh, has a number six size uh, nib. It's a uh, um, I believe that's a, that's a bock nib uh, steel nib uh, medium nib, but uh, it's it's a really nice nib So I do like that a lot and uh, I haven't written with that a lot lately. Uh, I, I don't know why, other than I have too many pens in my collection. But uh, yeah, I decided that I would ink that one back up because I I feel the need to have a purple ink inked up. And uh, I decided, yep, I need to. So there you have it. That's my currently inked pens for this week. So I think now let's go and do a writing sample. So the first pen is the London Pen Company, the Christopher 15 in Primary Manipulation 1. So we'll do an ink swatch. And uh, this is a broad nib. And I was tempted to actually ask Sean at London Pen Company for a medium. But I thought, well, you know what, I, I typically like broad nibs. So... Uh, I will go for a broad nib on this, and I'm glad I did. So this is the London, and it's the Pen Company, and it's the Christopher 15, 
and it's in primary manipulation one. Uh, it's a broad steel nib, it's a Bock nib. And then the ink in here is Diamine. It's Diamine Meadow, which is an ink that I am loving a lot. The next pen is the Edison Pen Company Collier in Antique Marble. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now, this is a, another broad nib, but this is a Yovo nib. And you can see there, so this is an Edison Pen Company Collier in antique marble and it's a again a broad steel nib and then the ink in here today is uh, an ink that i've not used a lot and a, a pen friend uh, and a, a good friend uh, tony in kansas city had written a letter to me and he'd written it with this ink and i'm like you know what i've not used this ink in ages i have to use it this ink is noodlers and i kind of thought it might have been apache sunset but it wasn't it was habanero and that is an ink color that i am loving a lot at the moment the next pen is the parker duofold prestige in the blue chevron so we'll do an ink swatch and this is uh, an ink that I really haven't used a lot of, and I decided that I would try and ink this one up. It's quite a, a, a thick ink as well. So this is the Parker Duofold Prestige in the blue chevron. Now, strangely enough, this does have a medium and it's an 18 cat gold nib, but the nib is as stiff as a steel nib. Now the ink in here is Monteverde. And it's blue velvet cake, which is an interesting blue. It's quite a dark blue. The next pen is the Parker Duofold Prestige in the black chevron. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now, this actually, strangely enough, might look similar in terms of line variation to this one, but it's actually a narrower nib. So it's a Parker Geofold, Prestige, and it's the Black Chevron. But this is a fine 18 cat gold nib. And then the ink in here is Franklin, Christoph. Sweet Maroon, which is a lovely maroon colour ink. The next pen is the Classic Pens LM1 in the Flame Red. We'll do an ink swatch. Now, typically I have this inked up with another ink. Um, I decided I would change red colours this time round put a different red ink in here just to see how I like it. Uh, so this is the classic pens LM1 in the flame red. And uh, it's a medium uh, and it's uh, an 18 cat gold. Um, it's a Bock nib as well. The ink in here is Waterman. And it's audacious 
red. And I have to say, I am liking how this flows in this pen. It's actually a really nice uh, writing nib with that ink. The next pen is the Classic Pens LB5 in the KN or Flame Red. So we'll do an ink swatch. And this is the ink that I would normally put in that LM1. But I decided that I would try and avoid having two identical reds inked up and I would go with a different red for the LM1. So this is the classic pens LB5 and this is in the KN which is basically flame red uh, and this is a medium uh, and it's a 21 cat gold nib from Sailor and then the ink in here is Mont Blanc Corn Poppy red which is a beautiful red ink and it's probably a little bit darker than the Waterman Audacious red there a little bit I'd say a little bit more darker maybe a little bit more brighter as well it's a slightly different red the next pen inked up is the Tatcha Miyabi Winter's Breath so we'll do an ink swatch And you can see here, this is a lovely sort of turquoisey color ink. And this is a Sailor nib, like the previous pen. So this is the Tatcha Miyabi. And it's uh, Winter's Breath. And uh, this is a broad and it's an 18 cat gold nib. And the ink in here is Pelican Edelstein Topaz, which is a beautiful turquoise ink uh, that I love. And as much as I want to change inks in this pen, I still haven't done it yet. The next pen ink top is the Atelier Lusso Carina in Black Ice Illumilite. So we'll do an ink swatch. And I have to say that this is a beautiful ink. Uh, it's an ink that I'm starting to love a lot more now. Probably because it's summer months and, and it's, I typically do go for some lighter inks now and again. So this is an Atelier Lusso Carina and it's in the black ice and it's Illumilite. The nib is a broad and it's a steel nib. And then the ink in here is Monteverde And it's Mango Moose. And it's two S's, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. The next pen is the Atelier Lusso Carina in the Diamond Nebula. And we'll do an ink swatch. And again, this is another broad nib. So you can see that there. So again, it's a Yovo nib. So this is an Atelier Lusso Carina and it's in the Diamond Nebula. And it's again a broad Yovo still nib. And then the ink in here is Monteverde and it's Blueberry Muffin. 
And then the last pen is the Leonardo Offertina Italiana Memento Zero Grande in the Sand. So we'll do an ink swatch. And this for me is a beautiful purple ink. But for me, once it's gone, it's gone. Um, I think maybe you can buy this ink now, but typically it was only available uh, with a pen from Leonardo. Uh, so this is the Leonardo. And I'm going to abbreviate this a lot um, because uh, it's the Memento Zero. Grande in the sand. Now, this has a medium seal nib, and it's a box nib on this one. And the ink in here is a Leonardo purple, which, strangely enough, was the purple ink that I actually received with this pen when I bought it. And I have been loving it ever since and I've not put another ink in that pen. At least I don't think so. So I think let's take a look at these pens inked up one more time. So we have a London Pen Company and this is the Christopher 15 in Primary Manipulation 1 in a broad steel nib inked up with Darmine Meadow. We have an Edison Pen Company Collier in Antique Marble in a broad steel nib inked up with Nuda's Habanero. We have a Parker Duofold Prestige Blue Chevron in a medium 18 karat gold nib, inked up with Monteverde Blue Velvet Cake. We have a Parker Duofold Prestige Black Chevron in a fine 18 karat gold nib, inked up with Franklin Christoph Sweet Maroon. We have a classic Pens LM1 in the Flame Red in a medium 18 karat gold nib, inked up with Waterman Audacious Red. We have a Classic Pens LB5 in the KN in a medium 21 carat gold nib inked up with Mont Blanc Corn Poppy Red. We have a Tatcha Miami Winter's Breath in a broad 18 carat gold nib inked up with Pelican Edelstein Topaz. We have an Atelier Lusso Carina in Black Ice Alumilite in a broad steel nib inked up with Monteverde Mango Mousse. We have an Atelier Lusso Carina in the Diamond Nebula in a broad steel nib inked up with Monteverde Blueberry Muffin. And we have a Leonardo Memento Zero Grande in the Sand in a medium steel nib inked up with Leonardo Purple. So there you have it. That's my county ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.